If an extremely preterm baby gets delivered, it, it is really a medical emergency. Some of them might be as small as 500 grams. That first hour or two is extremely critical. They really cannot breathe for themselves. They'll need fluid, they'll need to be kept warm. They're probably the most extremely fragile humans you can find. There are large areas of Australia that wouldn't be able to access this sort of medical care. So newborn babies who are born in a place that doesn't have that facility, we take it to them. It needs a specialised team to get to the baby with really an intensive care bed condensed into a cot and then bring the baby back safely to one of the tertiary centres. The Neocot was pretty much the brainchild of one person, John Grant Thompson. He's an engineer by trade. I absolutely knew nothing about premature babies and, and the problems that they possibly could face. But what, what is engineering for if it's not helping people? John's still, at the age of 81, really hands-on now. And he loves the fact that what he's created makes such a difference to um, the babies, not just within Australia, but overseas as well. The Neocot is like an intensive care ward, if you like, on wheels. This is the temperature inside the, the Neocot. It is used in every state of Australia, transporting a, about 4,000 babies a year. Using the Neocot in different places, we can give them a reasonable chance at, um, at survival, which um, previously probably wouldn't have happened. So this is an, a normal newborn snappy. Um, and then, then this was this was yours. Uh, in early 2000, my son Lachlan was born preterm in Rockhampton. Your lungs were not strong enough to breathe on their own, and Rockhampton did not have the equipment to keep you alive. The very first time I met John, I was attending a workshop. It was 2017. So this is the Neocot. It came to this this gentleman who was sort of sitting diagonally across from me and he said, I'm, I'm the in inventor of the, the, the Neocot. And this is what saved your life. Yeah, wow. You know, my heart just stopped a little moment and, you know, and the, the rest of my body just broke out in, in like, goosebumps. And, and it, it, all I can remember thinking was, oh, my God, this is the man. I have been interested in engineering since I was born. There was never any doubt about what I wanted to do in my life. I started off with the Air Force doing my apprenticeship in aviation engineering. Later in life, I applied for a job that was advertised for, for NASA to try and investigate radio communications between Earth and Moon. This was 1965 in Toowoomba. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. The scientists in America were going to instrument the astronauts' bodies to measure their physiological parameters to find out what happens to them when they get launched into space. And that had never been done before. That's one small step for man. All that medical equipment uh, and the sensors attached to it, that was the beginning of everything you see today in an intensive care ward. And that was the turning point for me because I saw what a great um, application of engineering in medicine. And I wanted to study more in that area, which is exactly what I did. John has been long-standing a professor of engineering at the University of Southern Queensland and the development of the Neocot was done as part of his role as an educator for the, for the university. This started about 1998. I was contacted by Dr David Cartwright, who was the then director of neonatology at Royal Brisbane Hospital. We were retrieving sick babies from all over Queensland using equipment that was heavy and cumbersome. This 
old looking one here was the early 1990s. We had bits and pieces that we strapped together with elastoplast. It was a little bit like an esky on wheels. We used to need um, four wardies <laughs> to um, get them into the back of the ambulance. And here we've got it on a hospital trolley to put it on an ambulance trolley to put into a vehicle. Generally they were strapped down with hockey straps such that the baby would wobble about like anything. John had previously made a system for use in the military, picking up injured adults. He'd never done baby stuff before, we knew that. Some of us were a bit skeptical, but we didn't stop him. We said, go for it, see what you can do. I designed this device with the help of two students from the university, and then with the help of Mr. Neil Mansell, who ran a trucking company in Toowoomba, we built the first prototype. We were very pleased. Um, I mean, one of the big features was the loading system. That was easy for everybody to use. We pretty quickly realised that this was the thing that was going to be best for us to be using. What John has done is he's condensed that whole intensive care bed into a transportable unit that can go in an ambulance, it can go in a helicopter, can go in an RFDS plane, and we can take that intensive care to that baby. It was September um, the 5th. I was 26 weeks pregnant. We're living in Bundaberg, so that's five hours away from Brisbane. But there's no intensive care or anything there. I just remember in the middle of the night, I was feeling some cramps. I realized there was some bleeding. Then we found out that I was five centimeters dilated and ready to go. She came out weighing 1,082 grams. I was very scared. She just seemed so fragile. I can't even imagine how terrifying it must feel to A, deliver a preterm baby and B, deliver a preterm baby away from where it's actually needing to get care. Luckily, the um, Neo Rescue team came even before um, I delivered, so they were actually there um, waiting for Charlotte to be born to transport her to Brisbane. 50 years ago, what happened to me would have been called a miscarriage. This day and age, with the technology and this, with the skilled doctors and everything, um, it's we're very lucky to, to be born in this day and age. Yeah. For many, many years, I didn't know who was travelling in the cot or, or anything much about it. I didn't know how many people were being transported, but I'd never had any contact with anybody. And uh, until Lachlan, who was the first. Lachlan was born at 28 weeks back in 2000. It was incredibly scary. He essentially had underdeveloped organs and didn't have the capacity to breathe by himself. So he had to be flown immediately to Brisbane for neonatal care. It was during the trial period when we were testing our first prototype that Lachlan needed transportation. And I met the uh, retrieval team and saw the Neocot for the first time. Many of us have seen humidity cribs, but it was so much bigger and so much more complex. I, I can remember seeing that and for the first time being really frightened. It was the recognition that, that he was so sick, that Lachlan needed something so sophisticated to, to survive. And the nurse said, it's OK, this will save your son's life. I'm wondering if we should drive to Yamba on Sunday. OK. Oh, no. I'm almost 20 now, mm -hmm. thanks to Dr John's uh, Neocot. Oh, a spa day, maybe. Yeah. Hearing this news that Mum had met this gentleman, I thought it would be lovely just to say thank you. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, that was pretty uh, awesome. How are you doing? I'm good, thank good you. To, you to meet someone that was so small and now is so large and was transported successfully, not, not to do with me, I've just made the tool. The doctors are the clever people. The engineers just make the tools for them. Lachlan, day two. 
goodness me. And so we've kept in touch and we're still in touch, which is which is nice. Oh, you brought some um. Eight months later, you know, our relationship had grown so much that I thought it would be lovely if you could come to my graduation. This is uh, my bedroom when, um, when I was 16. <laughs> Very different to what mine was like. Oh. Because my parents live in central Queensland. He really has been that, that stand-in sort of grandfather for Lachlan. And I left secondary school in 54. John lost his wife to cancer and he was still struggling with that loss. Uh, my daughter was born in um, Bottle Canal. And we're just delighted that John finds himself at this stage in his life that he's open to accepting some new people and some pseudo family into into his life as as well. Thank you, John. Okay, look after yourself. Oh, of course, same to you. Right. He's just a lovely, kind, humble individual. Right. But I think I see him as you know someone that I would like to, um, who I'd like to try and be like mm. in my life. We're going to do a measurement inside here. I've been officially retired now for 17 years from the university, but I'm still working on the Neocot four days a week with engineers and students. Get a, we can just hold them in place. I am very excited to be able to put my engineering knowledge into something that's actually helping human life. I find that very, very appealing. John has remained involved in the development of the cot and the modifications that we continually make whenever we get a new piece of kit and we say, hey, we'd really, really like to be able to take this on retrievals. I've found it a personal pleasure to be involved with the device and, and keep it going as long as I can. Um, I mean, there'll be a time, obviously, when I'll hand it over to somebody else, but uh, at the moment, I'm finding it very stimulating working with these people and knowing that we're contributing a little bit to the welfare of so many people um, th through this device.